Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial series and on this one we need to talk about the tremolo. I know it's a very simple effect, but maybe, I don't know, you're starting and you want to know how this works and you have some doubts, so I'm gonna just, you know, clear all the doubts right here. So of course you get the tremolo, uh, what it does, in, you know, in essence, that by, by definition, is going to modulate the amplitude of something. And what is the amplitude? Is the volume. So yeah, if I turn the tremolo and I play this, it's just a single note, sustained note, and I go right here to this one and I start doing something like, something like that, and I'm doing it with the mouse, right? So this is a tremolo, going up and down with the volume. This is what the tremolo does. Now, of course, you're not gonna do it by hand. You have some plugging that is gonna do that work for you. So I'm gonna go, turn it on, and I'm gonna go and play the same note. And notice it's going up and down. So this is the same if we go up and down, up and down. Now, of course, you have ways of doing this. For now, I'm just gonna unclick this one and I'm gonna explain what this does. So of course, now we need to decide how fast this is gonna go. So this one is in Hertz. So if I go to really slow, this is going to be a very slow, you know, transition. If I go fast, it's going to go much faster. Now, of course, then you have to decide how much of this effect do you want. And this is going to be the depth. So I'm going to go to the depth, go down. And now that effect, it's not, you know, it's not that, uh, you know, I wouldn't say intrusive, but it's not that, you know, clear. You just get a little bit of this. All the way. And just a little bit. So this is just, think of the depth as a blend control. Let's just think of it as a blend control. So again, this is how fast you go. This is how much are you going to do of the effect. So then you need to decide how are you going to do. Because it's not the same that, you know, we go right here. Or let me just explain with the uh, right here with this with this one. So let's say that I want to, of course, go down and up. It's not the same if I go slowly down and slowly, slowly up. And it's not the same if I go very fast down and very fast up. So there are different motions and you get a different uh, a different effect. Now let me just turn this off. If I go slowly, we get that we get that motion, like you know, fading off, fading out, and fading in. Now if I go and do the same thing and I, but I do it fast, it's not the same, right? Just a different movement. It's okay. So this is what this is going to give you. This is the instruction of how it's going to go down in volume. So this is a sine wave. So the sine wave, it means that it's going to slowly go up, it's gonna reach its uh, maximum point, and then it's gonna slowly go down and up and down. That's why we get a smooth transition if we go to something, you know, we get a smooth. But you also have other waveforms, and these ones are gonna be different from each other. So this one is a triangle. So the triangle, instead of doing a smooth going up and down, is going to be slowly go up and then break, make a break point right here and go down. But it's not on a round way like this, it's on a linear way. And this will be a little bit different. Now the sine wave and the triangles are kind of a brothers. They're very similar. Of course, we can hear the difference, but it's not that abrupt. So then we have the square for the square wave, and the square is much different. The square is like the on and off that I was doing before. So if I go right here, it's gonna be on, off, on, off. Now, of course, this might be useful if you go it and you do it in in fast rates. But this is what it does. This is the instruction. And of course, you have other instructions. For example, you have the saw, which is going to be slowly going up. And at one point, when it reaches the maximum peak, it's going to go and down the volume in volume very fast, just like it happens right here with the square. And notice that that, that is what is happening. It's going up and then boop, abruptly going down. So then you have the opposite. Instead of going slowly up, it's going to start very abruptly and then ramp down and then 
very abruptly go up and the same motion over and over again. So then you have the random. So the random is, what do you guess? Random. Notice that we don't have a pattern. It's just doing whatever. Cool. And then you have this one. And this one, it's just like the random. Now, as you can see, the random looks like the square. So it's a little bit, you know, abrupt. So this is pretty much like the random, but it's going to make a smooth transition between changes and changes. So notice that there is a smooth going up and down. This one is just up, down, up, down. That's the main difference. So pretty simple, just pretty simple. Now then you have the letter R. So this one is gonna be node retrigger. Okay, so what, uh, how an LFO works is that this is going to give an instruction in how, you know, we go up and down, up and down. And of course, it's going to start at one point. So this one, what it does, it will start and never stop. It will always follow the same motion, right? Going up and down, up and down. Let me go to something more easy to hear. Up and down, up and down, and nothing will interrupt this motion. It doesn't matter if I press a new key on the, my keyboard. It, do, it just doesn't matter. It's just going to always go up and down, up and down. Nothing is going to interrupt this. But the R means retrigger. So this is what it means is that every time we play, we play a key, it's going to retrigger the envelope. So it's going to start from the initial, initial place. It doesn't matter the, if the LFO is right here in, in the middle. It's going to start right from the start. So if I go and play a NARP that I have right here, it's going to be a little bit maybe annoying to hear. That's the ARP. You know what? Let me go and add something a bit more um, hearable, <laughs> let's say. A little bit of reverb and a little bit of room. Okay, so just a little bit better. So remember, we want to go up and down in volume. That is what is happening right now. But notice that it's not that abrupt, right? And it's because we have the retrigger. Every time this uh, uh, note lights up, it, it's because we are, uh, you know, playing a MIDI, a MIDI note. So the envelope is retriggering and we don't hear that effect because it's always starting from the beginning. Now, this is going to be different if I go right here. Because we start down. On this one, you start at the middle. But on this one, since you start down, you get a low volume. And of course, since it's retriggering before it reaches the highest peak, you get the sound. Of course, if you go faster, you're gonna start hearing more of the peak because it's going faster. Now, of course, if you don't want this, if, if you want that uh, motion of going up and down without the note retriggering, you need to disable this, and that's going to do the trick. All right. Super cool. Okay. So I'm going to go and stop it. Now, of course, the tremolo, remember, always remember that is a uh, modulation or something we do to uh, modulate the amplitude of a sound, which is the volume, right? Just the volume. We are going up and down with the volume. That's what we are doing, which is a different thing from vibrato. And I'm, I know that a lot of people will confuse this and it's okay because guitar players uh, kind of mess this up for us, you know, <laughs> mess this up, mess this uh, conception up for everyone, everyone. And I'm saying this from the uh, perspective of a guitar player. I've been playing guitar for like 23 years now and I've owned like 13, 14 guitars. I'm just a fanatic. So I can say that we kind of uh, fuck this up. So whenever you grab a guitar that has, uh, you know, a tremolo bar, uh, you're going to be using the tremolo bar and you get this nice, you know, sound that goes up and down and, you know, we get the tremolo bar. Now, if you think about this, what you're doing is you're stretching the strings. So you're not going up and down in volume, right? So it's not a tremolo bar, it's a vibrato bar. So if uh, you hear someone saying, okay, uh, I'm going to use my tremolo, it's not a tremolo, it's a vibrato, because the difference is that you're going up and down in pitch. And you know what? I can show you how this works. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to show you, I'm showing you this plugin because this plugin has a built-in vibrato. And that's why I'm have, I have the spectrum right here. I'm going to go and play the sound. And notice this, this peak right here. 
right? These peaks, these tones. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna start. Maybe I'm gonna go a little bit slower and I'm gonna go more depth on here. Notice how it sounds. But notice, take a look at this tone. This tone is not just going, uh, it's not going up and down just like we do with the tremolo. It's going back and forward. It's going to a different key, a different tone. So this is what vibrato does. And this is what we do when we use the tremolo bar on a guitar. We just stretch the strings, which means it's going, you're gonna kind of a flatten or you're gonna, uh, you know, maybe, not maybe flatten because it depends on how much you do, but you're gonna go up in pitch and go down in pitch. So this is vibrato, right? Not tremolo. So always trying to, you know, know the difference. So this is very different because now if I want to, I'm gonna go right here to the tremolo and I'm gonna do the same thing and we are doing a vibrato with tremolo. We are going up and down in pitch and at the same time, going up and down in volume, and that's the tremolo. And okay, so I'm, I'm just explaining the difference because maybe you don't know, and maybe you've been using it uh, wrong the whole time. You were saying maybe tremolo to refer to a vibrato, and uh, even though maybe people, some someone will under, understand what you're saying, uh, it's actually wrong, right? It's technically wrong. At the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It always, you know, what matters is how it sounds, and if it sounds good, it sounds good, right? Okay, so we're done with this. I know it was simple, but maybe again, you're learning and you want to really know what this does. So now you now you know. Okay, so remember to like the video if you, you know, if you find this useful. And remember, note, uh, remember that I have a lot of Bitwig tutorials and a lot of other tutorials on my channel. Check them out. The make, uh, you know, like the video, subscribe if you can. Check the Patreon. You have a lot of presets and, you know, material in there. And every month I'm going to be adding things there. So, you know, check it out. Just check it out. All right, so see you on the next one.